Welcome back to the morning blend. Today's high school students are overscheduled and overstressed, and many of them are turning to prescription stimulants to deal with the pressure. This documentary that you're seeing right there, Breaking Points is the name of it, explores these behaviors that are becoming normalized by these teenagers. Guida Brown, the executive director from the Hope Council on Alcohol and Other Drug Abuse, is here to talk about the problem and a very special screening of the film that they're hosting at the Kenosha Public Library. Good to have you here, Guida. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah this is an important topic. Uh, um, I don't think people realize how prevalent it is for students to use prescription drugs, especially for performance related issues, right? And, and that's why you feel this is so important. I do. I taught a class at Parkside and the students in the class were telling me that they were sharing prescription drugs, that they're sharing Adderall where they work, that it's super easy to get a prescription for Adderall. Mm. And it's just not anything I thought was a never thought that it was happening and B just never thought that anyone would want that sort of effect and so they are overscheduled and overperforming and the only way that they can do that is by taking prescription drugs taking the Adderall and and for people who aren't familiar with it Adderall is is one name of this drug but something that's frequently prescribed for ADD or ADHD right 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 and so so the kids told me, you know, just go to your doctor and say you can't pay attention mm -hmm. and they'll, you'll get a prescription. And I thought, I, I didn't know that people wanted that feeling. Mm -hmm. So why, why would I do this? And they said, well, then you can stay awake and you can do. And so when you look at through the documentary and just everyday kids, yeah. how much they're scheduled. I had a friend who told me that her, she was told when her little boy was four years old, if you don't get him into football now, he won't ever be able to play in high school. And I think now that's what we are typically doing to our children. We're just scheduling them and scheduling them and scheduling them. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, we talk about that just in our office, how it, it affects people, the, the sports schedules, the, you know, everything else. I mean, it controls and rules the, the life of your family. And so, as you mentioned, these kids, they, they can't handle it all. They're trying to get good grades. They're trying to get into a school. There's pressure to do that early, to be accepted or be enrolled or know where you're going earlier than before. All those kinds of things. So, um, I, you know, I think back in the day, a lot of kids would use caffeine or right. caffeine pills. Mm -hmm. It's graduated. It's worse now. Right. How prevalent is this? Do you think most kids are talking about this, know about this, doing this? I don't think most kids are doing it, but I think that they all know about it. Mm -hmm. They are talking about it. And again, this isn't, I, I think this is changing the picture of drug abuse. Yes. It's changing it from sort of that back alley, we don't talk about it, to these are high performing, high functioning, top of the line kids who are now feeling like they have to do this. And I Pressure. think that's the huge problem. The thing that it. surprised me in watching a portion of the documentary is how uh, honest Right. The, the mm -hmm. teens were and how forthcoming they were about using it. Almost sort of, in some cases, I felt like unapologetic. Like, hey, I've got a lot of to, to accomplish here in my young life. And so this is kind of, this is what helps. The one, the one that really struck me was the, the person who said, you can do, you can go through life without using these. But it's like winning a race against, it's like being in a race against people who have motors on their shoes. Yeah. You're not gonna win. Mm -hmm. And and that sort of that level of competition has to be debilitating. It's a terrible shame that that's the expectation we now have for our young people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What where is this going to go? You know, I mean, how do we how do we reverse this? How do we get back on track with our kids? Because I can't imagine that taking these kinds of drugs isn't rewiring things in their brain or their body, so that without them, they're not able to perform as well as they could have prior to using them. Right. Eventually. Yeah, I don't know. Um, you know, I've got job security. That's really what it comes down to because I don't know how this is going to end. I don't know that, you, I agree, you're absolutely right. It's not, somebody's not just going to be able to turn it off and then say, well, now I'm fine and I can function as normal. That's not going to work. And so in the documentary, they talk about graduating to other drugs. They talk about, we have a lot of people who start with marijuana and then they go up to, you know, other drugs. And so we know we have a, a opioid crisis, mm -hmm. but really I think that we have an addiction crisis. I don't think if you take away any drug that anyone's using today, it's not going to stop the addiction. They're just yeah. going to find something else that they're going to use. Mm -hmm. And that's really scary. Uh, another interesting thing too from the documentary were the adults in, in it 
put the blame squarely on our shoulders, that this pressure we're applying right. to kids um, with expectations right. of, like Tiff said, go, getting into a school or passing a test or getting a certain uh, score on, I can't, I can't tell you how many parents talk about their yeah. kids' ACT scores and where they're, where they're applying and all of those things. It's and again, I think, so where it could go, I think one of the, it, this is at least reducing the stigma about drug addiction because mm -hmm. now we're talking about it in the context of these achieving children who are becoming, who are going into problems with, with drugs. And so, you know, that's a positive aspect of it. The, you know, in the documentary, the, the guy said, you know, we can't blame the kids. We can't blame the kids when we have all of these expectations. I think about when I got into kindergarten, you know, I don't, I couldn't write my name. I right. Didn't, I don't know the alphabet. And I turned out okay. <laughs> and oh, I, yeah. Yeah. And so now it's, it's a great this, point. Yeah. This expectation of you need to do this, you need to do this. But by the time you're four years old, you need to be in football. Yeah. And I'm thinking, why? Yeah. We're not churning out better, smarter, more productive kids. We're churning no. out kids who are addicts. Yeah. And guess what? The kids don't care. It's the parents. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You've got this great panel discussion after the documentary showing the community screening of Breaking Points is Tuesday the 6th at 6 p.m. It's at the Northside Branch Kenosha Public Library. It's adults only. HopeCouncil.org is the website to learn more. And again, immediately following, you're going to have a panel discussion um, with a doctor and an addictionolo uh, addictionologist as well as a middle school counselor so that all of this stuff can really be talked about. Thanks yeah. so much, Guida. We appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you.